Dr. Curry, Dr. Christie. Thank you, Chairman Smith and uh, committee members for this opportunity to speak about climate change. I'm John Christie, Professor of Atmospheric Science at the University of Alabama in Huntsville and Alabama State Climatologist. I have served in many climate roles, including lead author of the United Nations IPCC. My main research is building data sets from scratch to help understand what the climate is doing. Of concern today is the proposition that the traditional scientific method has not been consistently followed in today's pronouncements about climate change made by so-called official panels. Science is simply a method that describes a pathway to discover information. In the method, the scientist makes a claim or a hypothesis about something and then proceeds to test that claim against independent data to see if the claim is false or not. In the first figure, next, I show a vertical cross-section of the atmospheric temperature trends. Surfaces at the bottom, stratosphere at the top, and the poles on either end, tropics in the middle. This figure is simply a claim common to climate models that the bulk atmosphere in the last 38 years should show considerable atmospheric warming due to extra greenhouse gases, especially in the outlined tropical section. So here we have a testable claim because we have observations with which to compare. In the next figure, I show the temperature progression from 32 model groups with their average in red of that tropical section. We are interested in the red curve because that is the consensus upon which claims of future climate change are based. But don't overlook the widespread of model results in the dashed lines. They're all over the place. There is no clear certainty on what the climate might do in the future. I also show observations on this chart of the bulk uh, atmospheric trend. Uh, you see with symbols, circles, <coughs> squares, and diamonds based upon three different types of measuring systems, balloons, satellites, and a merged product used in weather forecasting called reanalyses. Each of these methods has three or four different groups contributing a result. This figure looks confusing, so to simplify the test of the claim, I show the next figure, which is just the trend lines that are being compared. What is obvious is that the warming hypothesized and claimed by climate models to have already occurred has not. The warming is clearly overstated. When these trends are formally tested, the scientific conclusion is that the consensus of the climate models, the red line, fails to represent reality of the actual changes in the bulk atmosphere, and that's a foundational climate metric. Little known to many is that this result was displayed in the most recent IPCC, buried deep and without comment in Chapter 10's supplementary information. In my written testimony, I show that using that IPCC diagram, the same result as shown here occurs. The warming rate of models on which policy is based can be scientifically falsified as representing reality. Interestingly, the IPCC result, in that result, the models without extra greenhouse gases reproduce the actual observations very well. Indeed, I am a co-author of a report in which we used a statistical model to reproduce a, to a large degree the atmospheric temperature trends without the need for extra greenhouse gases. In other words, it seems that Mother Nature can cause such temperature trends on her own, which should be of no surprise. It is astounding and disturbing that such contradictory evidence to the IPCC's main model-based conclusion that humans cause most of the recent warming could be ignored so gallantly and willfully. In my view, the dispassionate analysis of scientific results on which policy decisions are based was sidetracked by those who control the IPCC documents. This problem is pervasive in climate science. Grand compilations such as the IPCC, the National Climate Assessment, pronouncements from scientific societies who never do any scientific work on the problem, by the way, to, for their results, and even EPA's endangerment finding are on the whole written by those who are not scientifically dispassionate. And as such, the traditional, traditional method of science was circumvented, in my opinion. I'll close by noting that when someone says that precisely measuring the role of, quote, human activity on the climate is something very challenging to do, and there's tremendous disagreement about the degree of impact, end quote, 
that person is making a scientifically defensible statement as demonstrated by my testimony. Thank you.